Hey, how you doing? This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And, boy, have I got a mess in my workshop. It doesn't take me long to make a mess. Um, this morning, I'm going to talk about something I haven't talked about in ages. And what prompted me to do that is this morning I was cleaning up one of my tablets, getting some of the programs off that I don't use anymore. I was getting a lot of Facebook messages that I really didn't care about on my tablet. So I was cleaning thing up, things up. And I found this program for tracking satellites, satellites that pass overhead. And in my case, more specifically, either the amateur radio satellites or the weather satellites. Now, many years ago, probably 25 years ago, I was into communicating via amateur radio satellites. Those were satellites that were built and put up for amateur radio communications. And that was a big thing about 25 years ago, and a friend of mine had a real elaborate set up with some nice direct big directional antennas plus a computer controlled rotor to move that antenna to the right spot both in azimuth and uh, elevation and he got out the, um, the hobby of working the satellites and he sold it to me and I set it up and used it for a couple years and then the rotor quit working in elevation, and um, there was no easy way for me to fix it, so it just sat there. So if you, if you go back to a couple of my old videos where I'm outside talking about setting up an antenna or something, I probably showed you those huge satellite antennas. Are antennas for working satellite. One is for 70 centimeters and one is for two meter operation, the two amateur radio bands. And with that, I could transmit and receive up to satellites that were passing overhead that would allow me to communicate with other amateur radio operators throughout the world. That was kind of fun. I even one time was able to talk to the uh, astronauts, one of the astronauts. I don't remember which one. At that time, I was doing my recordings on cassette. I've lost that cassette, and I got a card from them about my communications, a QSL card, and I've lost that too. So that's history. Anyway, what I wanted to do related to that and let me uh i want to get rid of all this put all that junk away okay uh, we're still working on my challenge one which is to receive a long wave station now an update on that last night i got my running 750 set up using either its built-in long wave medium wave antenna or an external antenna which I was using my G5RB. Last night manually I went through the band for about an hour didn't receive squat nothing not even a beacon just dead 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 so that's where I was there I have not given up on that challenge I'll be doing that randomly uh, at night to see if I can capture one of those but I want to devote this old laptop, which is running that X quarter program that will record audio when the squelch has been broken. If you don't know what that means, that means the audio has reached a certain level and then it starts recording. And if you go back to my some of my recent shows, I, I tell you in detail how that works. So what I was thinking is I need to get back into or want to get back into listening to and maybe even talking on these amateur radio satellites that are passing overhead. Now recently, they I say recently in the past three or four years, they started building these real small cheap 
satellites, and there's a bunch of them up there. And they get a piggyback ride on some of the uh, space shuttle um, trips to through to, to the space shuttle where they're taking up supplies or whatever. And then the, the astronauts will toss them out the window, so to speak, and then they're in orbit. So this morning I did some research on, you know, what's the latest information on these amateur radio satellites. And there's a bunch of web pages that will give you a ton of information, and it's updated information. There's even one web page that will tell you the most recent communications by amateur amateurs to a given satellite. So I went through that list and I picked what appeared to be four of the most popular satellites right now. And they are these four. You can't read this, of course. They are BY-70-1. Oh, oh, also, I only picked the ones that are FM. I didn't pick any single sideband because I don't have a scanner that has single sideband cap capability. I have radios that do, but not a scanner. So anyway, so the BY-70-1 on 70 centimeters, that's the downlink, it's called. That's where the satellite is transmitting down to you. And then there's another frequency of which you transmit up to the satellite. Another one is SO-50, that's 70 centimeters downlink. AO-85, that's 2 meters downlink. And the International Space Station, which is 2 meters downlink. Okay, so there's four I'm going to try to see if I can hear anything in the next couple of days. And what I'm going to do is, I can't use my big beam antennas for that are made for this, because my rotor doesn't work, or is partially broken. So I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to use just a multi-band VHF, UHF antenna, like a discone antenna. And then I'm going to set up that X quarter program on this and one of my scanners, like I did in a number of shows ago where I was monitoring some kind of traffic. I think it was taxi communications. And uh, I, I used this program to record that. But anyway, so I'm going to set those up. Scanner, a general purpose antenna, and this guy to monitor... Uh, for that kind of communications because it only occurs as the satellites go over and the, the satellites don't have the same orbit so they're continually moving over each pass so you may not get a good pass which in my case the satellite is at least 25 degrees above the horizon when it passes over you might not get one of, that for, one of those for several days. There are a number of free satellite tracking programs and prediction programs that will tell you when they will come over. I use one called Orbitron. It's a free program, nice program, easy to use, easy to set up. And what I can do is I can put in these four satellites and say, Give me the prediction of these four satellites for the next five days, say. Then I'll have some idea when these might come up. And so, even though, if I, if I put these four frequencies in my scanner and have it continually scan the four frequencies, when X quarter captures some audio, I won't know what satellite that I heard from because it's scanning these four but I can look at the time stat time stamp that X quarter put on there and see when it recorded the audio I can then look at that prediction of when a given satellite will come overhead and say oh okay that has to be this satellite because it was the only one in view meaning in view of my receiver, during that time period. So then I can correlate the two. That will give me an idea of what I can receive of these four. Maybe none. Maybe all four. And then 
I can again use the Orbitron, get a listing, and be physically around to listen to these communications. And then ultimately, I can set up my ICOM uh, transceiver and maybe talk to somebody on one of these satellites. So that's my ultimate challenge too, is to be able to talk to somebody on one of these satellites passing overhead. So that's where I'm going. Um, I'm not giving up on my long wave quest that will continue to go on. And uh, I've always been fascinated with being able to talk via satellite to somebody in some other part of the world. And um, I'm going to see if I can get back into it. Again, it might be another bust for me. I think the chances are much, much better than capturing a long wave station. So if, if you're interested in this and you want me to do some other shows on it about which tracking programs to use, um, talk a little bit about each of these satellites that I'm going to try, what equipment you need, um, just let me know. I also have a handheld antenna which has um, elements for 70 centimeters and 2 meters on the same antenna and you hold it in your hand or you put it on a tripod and you manually track with it. Or you can get fancy and could build a tracker device to, um, to move it around. I've got that. I also can, when I find out some information about what I can receive, I can use that. But I'll have to use it handheld. I don't have it set up on a tripod or anything. And the, the communications period for these satellites is very brief. It's probably five minutes or less because they're passing overhead really fast. And they, they can go from horizon to horizon in less than 15 minutes. And you may not even be able to pick them up for less than five minutes because of um, trees or something in a way, which that's going to be one of my problems is i got a lot of trees. So again, if you uh, if you want me to uh, do some more shows on this, I'd be glad to. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them. I'm kind of a little foggy right now because I've been away from this so long. And there's a, there's a ton of information on the internet and on YouTube, people that are active right now. So that's the show. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. And if you could take a few seconds and use that share button and share this show or one of my other shows, that would help other people find out about my shows. So that's it. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.